greetings and uh, welcome to episode, why, right, Mixstream episode 49. And this, it's been a while, folks, right? Um, doing a uh, of these live streams and also putting up videos and content on this channel. So, hey, you know, if you are new to this uh, channel, right, right, a warm welcome to you. Um, if you're not a subscriber, please, first thing, I would love if you could head on down there and click on the subscribe button. Do share this, right? We are live right now. So share this with all your friends out there. Anyone that you know who's interested in music, interested in what goes behind the scenes in, you know, music production, in recording and mixing this show is perfect for you okay so now let's quickly get down into it so Mixstream is um, we're going to be featuring um, I'm going to be featuring right this uh, new single by the band Escape Plan they are the featured artists for this week's uh, Mixstream for this Mixstream and uh, I've had the pleasure of uh, you know uh, working with them before I've mixed some of their uh, previous singles before they've had some really really good hits as well on radio right uh, Young Terinda right that was that was the, the hit single that they, they had uh, they got a lot of radio airplay. I think it was also featured on uh, some uh, TV OSTs as well. So, right, these bands, the Escape Plan, are not new to the scene, okay? Right, so very excited that they are out with a brand new track. And, right, and I'm very, very honored and pleased to have been, right, given the opportunity to mix this track. And I have to give a shout out to, right, everyone who's in the chat. We've got Acha, we've got Wani, we've got Rudy, we've got Zach, who's one of our patrons as well. But most of all, okay, the members of the band of Escape Plan are also here in the live chat. I see AT there, I see uh, Eddie, right, and uh, uh, also the official band account. But one person that we are missing out and we know really got to give a shout out to is Busy, okay, Busy Ibrahim, okay, um, who is uh, not only the one who produced and recorded, right, but uh, he is also an awesome uh, musician and a drummer as well. So shout out to Busy, okay, right. So first of all, um, I want to say also, right, happy Chinese New Year in advance. If you're watching this later in the recording, uh, as in the replay, also, happy Chinese New Year. It is a Chinese New Year weekend. Hope you all have a great time, okay. So without further ado. Right, um, okay, maybe before I go, I just want to quickly mention about the Patreon um, uh, program. So if you want to support, right, Escape Plan, there's a couple of ways that you can do it. Um, you can, of course, uh, head on down and check out, right, the um, Patreon page. Um, there are lots of perks and benefits, but if you sign up as a patron, right, um, and uh, message me with the code MIXSTREAM49, MIXSTREAM49, Right, fifty percent of all the revenue from that subscription will go towards the feature artist. It will go to um, Escape Plan. Okay, you can also right nowadays we also have things like um, um super ch super tanks and super chat. So if you feel like you want to donate as well, okay, please do. I will really really appreciate it. This would help you right to support the the channel. And again, all revenue that comes in, whether it be through super tanks or or stickers and all that, right. 50% of it goes to the band. Okay, so this is one way of supporting them. So, let's head on down. This is their brand new single. The title is called Sampurna. Let's check it out, okay? So, before we even kick off, the most important thing, one of the important things that we want to start off with is we want to always take a look at the big picture. This process is what's described as the discovery and the framing process. Right? Imagine a painting. Imagine, you know, uh, a painting. You are trying to put it into a frame. That's actually what mixing is about. You're trying to put everything into a frame. You're trying to put all the elements so that, right, it fits in the frame. So it looks like, you know, it's got a good composition, right? So that energy, when it comes to painting and art, is what we use in mixing as well. So it's discovery and framing. Discovery is we play through the parts, we listen, we check out, right, all the section, right, how the song goes, how the dynamics supposed to build, what parts come in, what parts parts come out, right, what the story is about, what the message, what's the feel, what's the overall vibe of the track, okay, and that's something that we discover by looking at all the individual parts. So, here what we do is I've pulled out together a rough mix first of all, so let's take a listen, right, to the to the rough mix of Sampurna, of the song, and I'll give you a little uh, blow blah blah commentary, uh, run through to it, okay, there we go, so let's take a listen. Intro. The same team, it just build up, full band kicks in.
The guitar, lead guitar is playing that octave melody. Verse. First verse. Build up. Now the toms come in. So we're building up with dynamics. There's also a synth that comes underneath it. Pre-chorus. You got some BVs there as well. And chorus kicks in. It's a good tool. It goes into a half-time feel, right? Makes it a little bit more heavier, a little bit more dense. So it's a good songwriting and arrangement tool. Okay, going into a little interlude. Second verse. Change of the drum pattern again. So, you know, with a lot of a hi-hat uh, play, a lot of hi-hat pattern. Pre-chorus. So the second verse is shorter. Chorus, second chorus. See the BVs here are also expanding, adding a little bit more dynamic. So even though the instrumentation on both choruses are the same, but the backing vocals are adding the added dimension to it. Solo! Miss Harry's solos in rock songs nowadays, man. Bridge. So, quiet chorus. break going into the last chorus and this last chorus is back to regular time standard time again it's a great arrangement tool okay back to a half time for you a lead guitar goes on All right, and a nice tight ending. So there you go, all right? That's the rough mix of the overall song, okay? So this is basically EQ, right? Uh, no EQ, no... Um, it's just balance and panning, right? And that's what you do, right? First of all, you want to get an overall big picture. The discovery and figuring process is so that you get an idea of what the overall song is. Don't go in diving straight away, diving into all the individual tracks. Always good to have a big picture first. So... Now, now that we've gotten that, so then it's time for us to okay, dive into the input tracks. And as usual, for those who have watched this in a long time, you'll know where I'm going to go with this, okay? I'm going to start very importantly by trying to establish right, and set my initial levels. And why setting initial levels really, really important? Because you want to make sure a couple of things. You don't. You want to ensure that your mix has enough headroom, right? It's got good signal to noise ratio. But very importantly, also monitoring levels to make sure that I'm calibrated, right? I've calibrated my monitoring levels in here so that I'm hitting 85 dB SPL. Not gonna go into it. There is a video on the channel, right? Uh, on the YouTube channel, which I describe right this process in detail and how I do it. But 
right? Short, uh, um, uh, needless to say, it's a very, very important step, okay? So setting, right, this initial volume level is what I'm going to do. So let's start first of all. Okay, I'm going to pull up, okay? It starts by the kick drum. So first things, all right? Let me go to show you and very quickly, briefly describe for every channel, I'm going to be using a combination of a uh, couple of plugins here. The first one that I'm going to insert, this is Virtual Tape Machines. So this is emulating, right, the signal path going through an analog console, okay? Uh, sorry, an analog tape machine. And then followed by Virtual Mix Rack, right? This is, um, okay, Slate Digital's Virtual Mix Rack. First one, I have Virtual Channel. So this is emulating right the channel of an analog console. In this case, I've set it to the British 4KG, right, SSL 4000G. And then running it into FG73. This is right an uh, emulation of the Neve 1073 preamp. So to recap, what's happening here is right, the signal is going through. It's recorded as if the, it's, we're trying to recreate as if the track, right, with as if the audio has been recorded. Right, on analog tape, and then going through a channel of an analog console, right, uh, with the Neve 1073 preamp. Okay, so that's basically what we do. We are injecting that sort of analog console, a workflow, and a flavor into, right, the digital environment that we work nowadays. So, what about setting the initial level? Okay, so here's what I do. We do that by setting the kick drum. I, at least, I do that by setting the kick drum level. And... I'm going to look at my master. What I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to get my kick drum to peak at minus 12 dBFS, okay? Right, I'm going to get to peak at this uh, minus 12 dBFS. Now, once again, uh, this, this number, this minus 12 dBFS is not a fixed number, right? This is my target based on right uh, how i've calibrated the levels and my monitoring in my room in my studio you have to experiment once again the video that i have on the channel really explains the process of doing it but doing so is really really important okay so i am going to set minus 12 you could you could set it to minus 10 if you want to it could be minus 14 there is no fixed number right it depends on how you calibrate your own system so okay uh, you might not see this, but I'll show you later, right? Because the master um, meter is over on my second screen. But I'll show you in a bit. So here we go. If I'm not mistaken, this should be close to minus 12 already. Okay, yeah. Okay, it's a little bit hot. It's actually at about minus 11. So I will just drop this down to maybe minus 1.5, okay? And I'll show you, right? This is the master. What I'm trying to aim for, we're trying to get this to peak, the kick drum to peak at about minus 12 dBFS, okay? Let's check it out. And just nice, right? At minus 12.3, minus 12.1, right? That's exactly what we want, okay? So this is going to be my kick drum level throughout the mix. And 9 out of 10 times, right? I'm not going to adjust adjust this kick drum level already. Instead, I'm going to be balancing everything else relative to this kick drum. And when I've done so, because of my calibrated monitoring, what I get here is I'm going to get the average monitoring level here, right? When everything is playing, the full mix is playing, it's going to be roughly 85 dB SPL, okay? Right. Oh, don't be confused with all the different um, um, numbers and the reference units, right? DBF, S, La, DB, SPL. Again, um, there are videos on the channel that explain it, but I do appreciate if you're interested to find out, go and go and check it out. But just keep that in mind, okay? So, I'm going to start off, first of all, kick drum. So, the drums that have come, right, these were all um, are obviously um, programmed by... Busy, if I'm not mistaken, Busy should be the one who, who, who did all the programming, right? Usually. So, sounds great. Sounds awesome already. Right? The patterns are all awesome. And it helps when your producer and your arranger is also a drummer as well. Because it understands it's perfectly, right? How the patterns are really, really work awesome. So, let's draw, bring up a virtual mix rack, okay? And the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to drop in FGA, which is the API 550. I'm going to pull out a little bit of 300 but in order to do that because FGA does not have a 300 hertz setting I basically have to pull out 200 and 400 hertz so here we go all right just to scoop out a little bit of the mid-range and 
to be honest that's it nothing else is needed right the sound source is already good the sample that's been used already sounds fantastic it's punchy you know uh, the, the programming the made sure that uh, the dynamics are very even and if and if you don't need to do anything right with a good source then that's it right don't feel tempted that you need to do a lot of things right in order to uh, make it sound good there's there's always times for that there's always times for you to leave things alone so, but what I will do and I enjoy uh, and I do like to do and I do find it useful is to drop maybe a clipper, right? In this case, this is Boss Labs little clipper. So this is just to catch the very loudest peaks. So there are there is like one little part here, which I think is probably like an accent. So we just check it out, right? So let's drop this too. Yeah, so just one little thing that it helps to catch. Let's drop it down. Okay, that sounds a little bit too much. Okay, that's cool. So I will probably leave it at about minus 12.5. Yeah, just to catch that peak. Right, that's all it does. Right, not changing any tone, EQ wise. That's it. Just a little cut right around 300 hertz. So let's move on to the next thing. Right, snare. Okay, like let's drop in the snare. So same thing. Right, snare also has the tape machine and console emulation. So let's blend that in. Okay, again, it's a nice, powerful snare drum. Um, again, I don't feel like you really need much to do. Plus, you see, at this stage, right, without the rest of the parts in context, you don't really know, right, whether do you need to brighten it. You, you don't really know what sort of processing that you need to add. So you'll find out more, right, once you have a little bit more information, once you gather more info with the rest of the parts in. Okay, so uh, I would probably just leave it at that, okay? Just leave it at that. So next thing I will bring in is actually the overheads. Okay, let's go over with overheads. So let's go maybe to the chorus section, right? Let's blend it in. Solo the overheads. So Nicely, it's been nicely, nicely EQ ready. So the bottom end is actually not much there. That's fine, right? But just take out a little bit of. Let's see. That's about four fifty. And maybe just a little bit where the hi hat has a little bit of ringiness. So just cutting out a little bit of 3K. A little gentle, right? Chop at about 3K. And that's it, all right? Let's bring in room. So there's two different room mics here. So let's check out room A, right? So room A, if I'm not mistaken, should be... Yeah. It's like... um These are mono rooms, and this sounds like it's a little bit more distant. And then room B is... Right, so different flavors of room actually, right? So let's check out room A first. Take out a little bit of the extreme bottom end. Okay, so a little bit of honkiness at about 180, 190. Very nice, okay? So, I'm just a little bit curious. So now this room, let me check out room B first. Again, man, these sound already good on its own. Right, right. Um, not mistaken, what are we using? This is a Easy Drummer, Superior Drummer, right? If I'm not mistaken. 
So they really, really sound good now nowadays, okay? All right, so let's check out. What I want to do is I do want to give this room a little bit of size and stereo width because these are, somehow these are mono, mono room mics, which is fine. But let's just give it a little bit of widening. And one of the best tools for that is to create fake stereo is actually oh, like, uh, Isotope's Ozone Imager. So let's stereoize this baby, right, just to give it a little bit, all right, not, not that much. There you go. It's bypass, so there's a mono right up the center. This is just to give it a bit of, a little bit of width, okay? So a little bit of uh, full stereo, so to speak. Nice. Beautiful. Okay, let's go on, all right? Again, with it, it makes my job so easy when the sound sources are really, really good, right? Because, uh, and, well, it's in, on, on one hand, I love, of course, recording with live drums and then, you know, whenever I record Busy Busy, it's also an amazing drama. I love, right, um, um, recording whenever um, uh, and, and using Busy to, to, to record stuff. Sounds amazing, sounds incredible. But sometimes, you know, I do appreciate <laughs> that sometimes with these live program drums, they make it sound really, really good, right? Right off the bat, I don't have to do, don't have to do much, okay? So I do admit there, there, there is a part of me which is, you know, a little, you know, um, a little bit of a, two, a divided between, yeah, I love recording live drums and I still would prefer if the option is there, right? And, uh, and, and if we could do it. But... You know, I don't mind. Okay, I do. I don't mind. Uh, there's there's a, another thing about about these program drums itself, which are good. So let's go with toms. Let's go with the first tom. So I'm gonna highlight this section in the um, first verse, which, right, you have this tom pattern going on. So I'm going to just double check. Uh, even though these are program drums, I'm not gonna assume. I always want to double check to make sure that right the polarity is in the right spot. So what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to solo the tom and the overheads. I'm going to play them together, okay? So let's play them together. Okay, now let's flip the polarity, okay? Okay, right. Oh. Bit hard to tell because sometimes because it's very clean. Let, let's let's go to this again. All right. Okay. Now, yeah. Now I can hear it definitely. So the original sounds a little bit more fuller, right? Um, there's a little bit of high mid that gets cancelled out when I flip the polarity, but let me just double check again with the, uh, with the toms in C two, right? Like how it's supposed to be panned in the mix. Maybe sometimes that changes, right? Let's check it out one more time. Flip the polarity. Interesting. I actually somehow think that when I put it to where the panning position is supposed to be, when I flip the polarity, it sounds slightly fuller. So this is something that you don't want to ignore if you're mixing, okay? Especially if you're talking about drums or multi-mic instruments. You always want to check the polarity against each other. Don't assume that it's already perfect, everything is sounding good, especially if you're recording live drums, right? And, and you're not the one who record, it was recorded in another studio elsewhere by another engineer. It's always worthwhile to always check polarity, okay? Make it a habit. It just takes, right, 10 seconds to do and, right, arrive at a decision. So, let's arrive at this, let's let's make decision, let's go with this, okay? Right, with the polarity inverted. So, let's solo the tom now. All right, okay. Okay, what I will do with most of the toms is, right, the toms are all routed to this group. I will take out a little bit of uh, everything above 10k, right? So okay, I'll just filter out everything above 10k. You don't really need all the super, super top end anyway. 
Okay, right. So it's got a bit of hmm, that note. That's about 300, so let's get. All right. Okay, let's go with floor tom first because the floor tom is the one that's uh, a little bit busier. So let's check out floor tom. Same thing. All right. Let's check with the polarity. Nice bottom end. Okay, let's invert. Very close, very close. Again, somehow with the polarity invert, right? With the polarity invert, it just sounds a touch, touch heavier. A very tiny hair heavier, like very, very slight amount, okay? Okay, let's solo the, let's solo the floor tom right now. Okay, let's take out this honking. It's a bit of honkiness at about 960, 950. So, debate is, should I take out some of this? Okay, now there's another one. It's about 690, 680. And sometimes I feel like I'm tempted to take out, you know, a little bit of 200, 300, but let's leave it there for now because sometimes maybe that's where we need, right? We need the the weight there. Let's not assume and start, you know, sculpting out frequencies here and there and will willy nilly, right? Just to just because just because you read somewhere that you need to scoop out your low mids, okay? Not necessarily just, just leave it alone, okay? And hey, busy is back. Yeah. Right. Hi JD for the main drums. I'm using Naughty Seals Perfect Drum. Oh, okay. Right. Da 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 again. PD and addictive drum, so it's a combination. Very, very cool. Well, it's cool that you know this, these are sounding really good, right? And it's great that we're not using, uh, you know, uh, to to be honest, another thing which I'm kind of a little bit uh, bored and sick of is that <laughs> because so many people use uh, addictive drums or easy drummer, right? So uh, uh, easy drummer actually because well, it's the easiest one to get get hold of. <laughs> Right, if you know what I mean, All right? Okay, let me just uh, treat this a little bit, sculpt the way some of this uh, bottom end here. Here we go. Okay, right. I'm just cutting away some of this resonance. Okay, it's as if I'm applying a gate. Okay, but here we go. Let's check it out. Okay, let's go now to Tom Two. Same thing. Okay. Let's check in C2, right? Polarity. Flip polarity, back to original. Okay, with Tom 2, original works best, okay? It's fine, fine the way that it originally is. So let's solo Tom 2. So he's got... It's about 315 hertz. And again, let's just leave it like that, okay? Again, I'm going to fight the temptation to want to EQ the heck out of everything. Let's just leave it like this. Sounds great already, okay? Okay. Let's do one thing. I want to add just a little bit of uh, uh, dimension. But first of all, okay, on overheads, especially with cymbals, I will often uh, drop in this uh, AOSIS E2 deesser. So deessers are not just for deessing, right? They are very, very handy and useful tools as well. This is going to be used just to massage the top end of the uh, cymbals by a tiny bit. We're talking about like, you know, maybe 1 dB or so. So let's check it out over right here. Okay, so you can see here, there's not much. It probably does get to about 2 dB. 
So it's just helping to ease out a little bit of that extreme top end, la, right? Just to smoothen things out a little bit, right? Very cool. So let's go on now. Again, right, with with a lot of these um, um, program drums, dynamics wise sounds really good. Don't need to put any uh, uh right, no sort of a processing on all the individual tracks. But what I will do and I do like to to do is I'm gonna put right uh, a compressor on the overall drum bus. So right, I've got this setting that I have that I really like. Um what I will do is check out, all right, I will mess around with the attack setting. So let's... Oh, okay, right. So this, as you can hear, it's really acting really hard. Okay, a little bit too much, I think. So let's back it off. Right, so about that, let's play with the attack. Okay, very cool, right? So, I'm going to set it to about 0 0.3, uh, no, 0.3 milliseconds, right? 0 0.3 lah, that's right. Okay, so sometimes I will vary between the 0 0.03, which is extremely fast. This is going to be really clamping down on the, on the on the snare. But sometimes I would like to just let the transient go a little bit. So sometimes I will bring this up to about 0 0.3 or maybe right one millisecond just to let that initial transient come through. And let's go with... Nice. So it is bringing up a little bit, uh, it's bringing up all the low level stuff, the sustain, right, the ambience, right, that's in the overhead, that's in the, in the room, and just adding energy. That's what we're doing, right? Not really trying to control the transients. We're not, add, we're not trying to control any dynamics because it's already really good. It's really even, it's really balanced. I'm just trying to squeeze, squeeze that in energy out of the, of the, the drums. Bypass. Nice. Just to tighten it up a little bit, okay? I, you know, I honestly don't mind it without, but in context later on with the rest of the instruments, this will probably work, okay? So, there you go. Drums. So, let's move on now to the next thing. Bass. So, let's go with bass. So, same thing, right? Tape and console emulation. Oh, I'm always, uh, I always do a little 20 hertz high pass filter just in case. And let's check out the bass. All right, here we go. Very cool. All right, so. This bass track, all the bass tracks are also going to be, um, of course, there's only one here. It's going to be feeding into this group here. And there are a couple of things. I'm going to start off, first of all, with this Wave C4 stereo. So C4 is a multi-band, but I am actually only using the uh, one band here, which is the low band, like right? the mid, high, and the, these three other bands are all bypass. What is this is doing is this is just controlling the real bottom end. It's not touching the mids. It's not touch, touching the uh, the the treble uh, portion of the signal. So let me just solo this. Solo the bay. Nice. So this is just to control the real real bottom end. And the reason why I do this right early on at this stage is so that later on when I do right add the other compressors on. It is not going to have. It won't right, react too much, right? It, because obviously, right, bass um, frequencies are the ones that usually trigger. You know, they are the loudest, right? They they have the most uh, uh, intensity, and they tend to trigger the compressors a lot more. So I don't want the low end, any booming low end, to right unnecessarily trigger the compressors that follow after that. So this is just to really massage the bottom end, the low end, so that it's nice and even and easy to control, right? Okay, let's go to a busy part of the, busy part of the song. Chorus. Let's go. Okay. 
Okay, so this is obviously an overdriven bass. Let's just EQ a little bit of that uh, spikiness out. It's about a 1.7, 1.8k. Nice, okay. All right, okay, very, very cool. So, now the next thing I will drop is Surfer EQ Boogie, and you know, like people know, like right, I, I love this plugin as well. Very cool plugin because it's an intelligent plugin that will write the different frequencies. And what I'm gonna use this for is I'm just gonna try and pick out where the harmonics are, the, like the unwanted harmonics, okay? So sometimes, especially with overdriven bass, you get a lot of harmonics. So let's check it out. Let's start with the fifth harmonic here. Yeah, so... So what this does is it just, you know, sculpts out that fifth harmonic. Right, and if you and if you do not know what a fifth harmonic is, right in the harmonic series, the you have your root, which is your fundamental. You have your first harmonic, which is an octave. You have your second harmonic, which is a f an octave, a, a fifth above that. You have your fourth harmonic, which is two octaves above the fundamental, and then your fifth harmonic here is the uh, third. Okay, above is two octaves plus a third. So you can imagine where this is going to be very beneficial. For example, if let's say this is uh, in the key of E minor, for example, if the bass is playing in E, if it is, if your fifth harmonic is give is going to give you a major third, it's going to give you an, a G sharp, which implies a major chord. So it gives a little bit of that clashiness there. So taking out a little bit of that fifth harmonic, right? helps to solidify right you know that this is in fact an e minor right for every example okay I, i'm not pitch i'm not a perfect pitch so i don't know what the actual key of this song song is but let's take that for example okay so helping this out right helps to take out that fifth harmonic very useful tool right for that and it will serve throughout here okay? it tracks the note right and it follows it in real time Okay, very cool. So sometimes there's parts like these, which, right, as you can hear, solo, there's a little bit of... There's a little bit of that release noise, the, 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 right, the, the, the string release uh, sound, right, where it kind of rings a little bit here. So what I will probably do, and I'll do this, of course, later, is I'm going to probably... Right, edit this out, chop it to get a very clean, very tight bass line there. So you get a tap tap instead of tam tam, right? You don't get that low ring going on. See? Alright. Especially when you get to that, right? Sometimes the harmonics will real real ring out. And little little things like that, right, help to clean up the bass sound. Okay, let's move on. Let's go back. Okay, I want to try something which, right, uh, something which um, I've uh, tried in the past, then started trying again. And this is, like, it's attributed to Andy Wallace, right? It's known as the Andy Wallace um, low-end bass trick. And, right, to do so, right, it's very simple. You need two things, actually. You need a Neve Tennis 73-ish. You need a Neve-style EQ. And you also need an SSL style. It's a combination of the two. So let's try this and see whether this works for this bass, okay? So what we do first of all is I'm gonna set right the high pass filter at about 40 hertz, right? That's usually where I would go. Same thing, then I would take the center frequency of the low shelf and put it at 40 hertz. Right, so next thing is we are gonna crank this up this baby up like crazy 16 db oh my goodness that is insane man so let's just hear how it sounds it's gonna it's gonna be it's gonna be nuts actually it's gonna be crazy Woohoo! that bottom man is like it's huge 
But actually, it's not too bad because you actually have this high-pass filter or at 40 helping to control it. But that's only half the story, okay? So the second half, right, to help control it a little bit more, on the SSL uh, EQ, which follows, we also set it at that same high-pass filter at about 40. And we check a little bit, right, because... Um, uh, we're going to just check a little bit, usually between 100 and 200. We're going to try to take away because that's where some of the boom is going to happen. Take out a little bit around 170. Okay, right. Hearing a little bit of a uh, little bit of digital clipping in here, but I'll I'll deal with it. You can always it's very easy to deal with. So, in effect, right, this is actually sculpting the low end, right, in such a way, but with two different uh, fil filters, and it's giving this nice little. Um, boost but right not muddying up the uh but not muddying up the base okay so this is insane this this right sometimes it works for some styles it work right but there are some some styles and some songs where sometimes you don't want such an aggressive a uh, huge gigantic low end and uh you yeah it's not not appropriate lah. so in this case right for this style of music right it's really really works so let's move on next thing 1176 I love this baby. Okay, let's check it out. So, let's drop this down first of all. So, this is going to be fairly aggressive, okay? We're looking at about 10 dB, you know, of gain reduction. Let's level match the thing. There you go. Very nice. Level wise, it's really good already. But we're not done with that, okay? So, a couple of other ingredients with the bass. Next one I'm going to put is Bass Rider. So, Bass Rider, right? So, this is like cheating, man. I want to go somewhere which is a little bit busier. Let's go maybe second. There you go. So it's really useful. Bass Rider is an amazing tool, right? I do recommend recommend getting, right? I also recommend getting Vocal Rider as well. Right? And this is not to function as another compressor. It's just there to really make sure and maintain that the low end, that the bass level is really, really even and really solid, okay? Right, so... But we're not done. MV2 is what I would drop in next. So MV2 is another tool which I really, really love for bass. And what we're going to do is I'm going to bring up this parameter here. It's called low level. Now, um, you, Waves doesn't really explain what's going on underneath the hood, right? But it is running a combination of its expansion. It's like parallel processing. It's doing something that, you know, it would use to take a much more complicated um, signal path and a plug-in, you know, um, a plug-in path to do in the past. But it makes it all simple because it's all inside this one plug-in. It's a combination of parallel processing, parallel compression, a little bit of expansion, a little bit of uh, um, uh, uh, compression as well. So this is what we do. High level is like your ordinary compress compressor. Uh, usually we don't touch this, all right? Not for these purposes. But this low level thing, all right, it's going to, again, squeeze out, bring out whatever lies down in, in your, right, whatever lies below there. All the good stuff, such as, right, the harmonics, things such as, you know, pick attack, if you're using a pick, right? So it's very, very useful for guitars as well. It helps to increase things such as sustain, right? Because again, low-level stuff, it helps to bring it out. And very importantly, right, harmonics, right? So it's not just a dynamic thing, it's also a tonal thing, 
right? All of these things, right, uh, are not just viewed. Compression is not just viewed from purely a dynamic, dynamic uh, angle. There's also, right, the advanced way, the more, right, advanced way of thinking about it, right, is to think about it in a tonal context. So, so I'm going to try and eke out. Not much, okay? So we got to compensate the the uh, volume. Let's bring the output down. Nice. Right, so let's take out a little bit. So after applying all this processing, I still do hear some uh, notes that poke out. So let's check out. Nine hundred kind of pokes out a little bit. Let's shave off a little bit of the top end. We're not getting rid of everything, we're just getting up the extreme top end, okay? Okay, so I think we still need to drop out a little bit more of this, right? This uh, 172 hertz. Just drop it out a little bit. That's better, okay? Just an additional, like, 2 dB is more. There we go. Love it. Very, very cool. Okay. Now let's make sure that this this uh ending here is tight, righty tidy. Very cool. Wow. Right, okay. And I'll probably go through this with a little bit more fine tooth comb as usual, as I mentioned here on this verse here and all these sections, just to bring out, right, take out all those extra uh, erroneous ringing uh, parts. Let's move on! My favorite part, guitars! Okay, so let's check it out, right? The distortion guitars. Okay. Awesome. To be frank, again, man, right? It sounds really good, all right, at the get go already. Nothing really needs to be done here, okay? All right? There's really, really very, very little to be done. Okay, right? so what I will drop in is I will drop in TDR Nova, right? Just to maybe take out the extreme bottom end. Everything below 50 and just drop out. Right, you can take out everything above 10K, man. Right, it doesn't, doesn't really need it here. So let's check out. Okay, so at about 780, 790, okay. The bottom end is really nicely controlled as well. And voila, I don't think it needs anything more than that, man. Again, this is where I really, really, you know, um, busy done. You did a great job on this, okay? You did a great job on this. Um, because, you know, the saying goes, right? You, it all starts with the source, right? Not source, uh, the source. And, you know, the really, really great records that you hear, all your favorite records, right? All came from, you, 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 um, a, a, a lot of sometimes glamour, sometimes a lot of, right, um, sort of 
importance is placed on the mixing process, so to speak, right? You hear the terms fix it in the mix. But mixing is not a fixing is not a fixing process, right? It's not a process where you try to mis- um, magically transform, right? A crappy sounding sauce into something that sounds awesome. You can't. If if it sounds crap, if something sounds bad, it was not recorded well. It was not the correct tone. It was not the right type of uh, um, uh, capture, right? Or not the right combination of sounds. There's very little that uh, we as mixing engineers can do. Yeah, we can try to make the most out of it. We can try to improve it. We can try to polish it. We can try to hide the flaws, right, so to speak. But it's still not going to be at its fullest potential. uh. So one of the ways that really, really helps, right, your project or your production to get reach its fullest potential is to get the sound source right. So in this case, right, the distortion guitar, the tone, right, sounds just right. The amount of saturation, amount of overdrive is just just nice, not overly distorted. We're not like, you know, full on, full gain kind of a distortion going here. And it fits perfectly. So for me as a mix engineer, right, my job is already made so much easier, right? All I need to do is just balance it and that's all, right? All right, so I will keep this in mind later because, again, we're not dealing with the full picture, not the full information yet. We still have the vocals, which I'm going to get to right after this, okay? And once the vocals are in, then maybe I'll know, okay, the guitar is going to need a little bit more bite, a little bit more brightness, a little bit more presence. But without all these elements, the important elements in the picture, you, you, can't, make any, you can't make any decisions, okay? So... Now that we've done with the drums, the bass, and the main rhythm guitars, I'm going to skip. We're going to skip all the lead guitars. We're going to skip all these octave lines. We're going to skip all the synth parts because we're going to get to the very, very important part that we need to deal with, and that is the vocals. Vocals is king, and vocal is what the listeners will gravitate to. That's what they. That's what pulls their attention, That what grabs the emotion of the listener is the vocal, okay? Not the hi-hat. <laughs> All right, so you're gonna pay a lot more attention to this. So I'm gonna go through. Let's look through some of the stuff that I'm gonna do with the vocal. So, uh, and also some of the production tools and some of the production strategies, right? That's being employed here in this song. So let's start first of all. Let's go with, right? Really nice. Everything is even, right? Really well done. So let's go with this. Right. Come to some puna. Let me turn off, turn off some of the effect first. Okay, let's uh, let's unsolo the thing. Let's just balance it. Very nice, okay? So, let's go through what I have in the signal in the signal path here, okay? I'm going to start off with TDR Nova, right? You saw me using it on the guitars just now, but I will give you a little bit more in-depth run-through of what TDR Nova is. TDR Nova is a parallel dynamic EQ. And what that means is that you can treat this as a normal parameter EQ if you wish. You can boost, cut, you can uh, dial in the uh, center frequency, you can dial in the bandwidth, right, or the Q level, but you can also engage it in the dynamic mode. And dynamic mode here means that it's going to combine the features or the characteristics of a compressor and an EQ. Okay, right. So think of this as a compressor which you can tune and you can dial in to act on a certain frequency or range of frequencies. It's a compressor which you can tune to frequencies, right? Basically, that's what it is. So let's start off first of all, right? I'm going to treat this normally how we treat the vocals, right? So let's check it out. So a high-pass filter first, just to take out all the bottom end. Kau begitu sempurna di mataku. Kau tiada celanya. Okay, now there's one other thing which I will talk about later, but let's go. Let's go first of all. Okay, so 
Kau tiada celanya Kau begitu Yeah, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of cleaning up Sometimes there are a little bit of clicks here and there, right? Which we'll have to right, deal deal with in the, in the later on But let's start with that So Begitu sempurna di mataku Kau tiada celanya Alright, so there is a little bit of um, a little bit of honkiness. Let's do that. Let's activate band number two. Solo, right? Narrowest cue, smallest cue, and let's look for it. So, it's about at 800. Okay, at about 800. So, this can be caused by many things. Sometimes it's it's the voice. Sometimes it can be the characteristic of the microphone. It can be the characteristic of the room reflections. There's so many reasons that contribute to this. But, right, to be this 800 here is kind of poking out a little bit. And it pokes out sometimes. So only on certain parts, you know, on the cow, on the dimataku, this comes out mainly, I think, in the, the ah vowel sound, right? So it is around that region anyway. So it just pokes out a little bit too much. So actually, let's go over to a section of the song which is a little bit more busier, the chorus, okay? Right, so let's check out the chorus. I want to... Find this uh, section where right, okay, and usually the reason why is because usually at the more energetic parts, right? Any singer, whenever they reach their higher register, will tend to sound a little bit strident, right? It just starts to poke out a little bit more some of the, the higher mid frequencies. So this helps to deal with it. So let's dial in. Let's check with. Band number three, band solo. Let's solo band. Okay, right. So there are actually a couple more things. So there's one more here. Let's look for it. I think it's around 1K. It's actually quite close to... It's quite close to this uh, in her. So I think in order to deal with this, what I will do, right, instead of you know, engaging too many, is let's widen the gain, uh, widen the cue a little bit. Yeah, that works a little bit better. So instead of having two bands and activating two narrow bands, I just widen the cue a little bit on this so that it kind of covers that adjacent adjacent uh, uh, area as well okay so let's check it all right so let's back go back to this band number three so right okay let's cycle that So, right. okay, I apologize if you are right listening to this on headphones. That could be a little bit loud. So at about 3.8K, right? Just a little bit of stridentness, right? That strident frequency over there. But again, it's normal, right? Especially for any vocalist or any singer, when you're hitting your high register, that's where the energy... Ah, so that's just there too, right? Like control that frequency, right? Here we go. Okay, very cool. Right. No, so spoof operator here is also something which uh, does the same thing, similar to what I'm trying to do, but I. Typically, don't use this when it comes to rock productions, okay? When it's more for... Because uh, it kind of beautifies vocal a little bit too much. With rock stuff, you do want the vocals to have a little bit more of edge, a little bit more grit. Smooth operator tends to all right, make things a little bit too pretty. So I will do that on pop stuff, but usually with rock stuff, I, I will right, not engage smooth operator. 
But same thing again, virtual tape machine, same uh, guy, and virtual mix rack, but some couple of different things here when it comes to virtual mix rack. So instead of the FG73, I replaced that instead with Hollywood with the virtual tube collection. So instead of a solid state preamp, I've engaged right and used a tube preamp instead. So vocals definitely one of the areas where it will benefit from, you know, a little bit of tube saturation. And this is exactly what it does here, okay? But the beauty, the one that I really love, right, to use is actually this baby here. This is FG Stress, which is an emulation of, right, Empirical Labs Distressor. And this is actually used for parallel processing. So I love parallel processing on vocals, okay, and this is beautiful. So let's just check it out, all right. So this is what it's going to do. I usually have this at default at 50-50. It works, right, for me, 50-50. Berikanku sedikit waktu untuk bersamamu. Come. Well, parallel processing, right? Especially parallel compression on vocal is really like cheating. It really sounds like it's really invisible <laughs> dynamic control because it's really, really transparent. You have right the very heavily compressed, and you can see you are we are hitting like Come again 12. 12 dB of gain reduction, okay, on on the on the vocal, but blended in with the uncompressed vocal, you it's you have that you know sort of density and that solidness and you know, right with vocals. I really love doing parallel processing. Whew, okay, right, DSR, right, FGDS, just a, just a good old DSR, right, at this at this stage. Uh, very very useful. Okay, so let's unsolo it. Let's check out. All right, FG Stress also has the ability to add some harmonics as well. Now at this point in time, the harmonic generator is not on, but let's check it out. Second. Three here seems to give a little bit of extra bite. It's very subtle, right? This, you know, it kind of seems to move it to a slightly higher mid range there, and I think it helps, right? But the very important thing with all whatever processing that's being applied is this key word that we want you to remember. Okay, it's called set and don't forget. Okay, right? You, you know the it's it's derived from the phrase set and forget, ma, right? Because there are some things and there are some tools in this world where you just want to set and then you want to forget about it. But not in mixing, okay? You want to set but you don't forget because you want to be able to sometimes make changes. You want to sometimes go back, right? Mixing is not a linear process. Sometimes when you're working the vocals, suddenly you need to go and jump back to the bass to just tweak one little thing and then you jump to another thing. Altogether, it's not a linear process, so everything affects everything. You make one little tiny change here, it's going to affect your snare drum. You make you change your snare drum, then it's going to affect your guitar, right? So this back and forth thing, right, is something that you have to keep in mind. So that's why we set things, but we don't forget. Okay, don't forget that we've done certain, we've applied certain types of processing on on uh, certain uh, uh, sections or certain parts of the tr track, and we need to uh, pay attention to those. Okay, so there we go. <laughs> Very, very nice. Okay, so this is the first half and oh, almost forget one thing. There's another one here. This is Renaissance Compressor Arcom, all right? And this is not doing anything except to just catch peaks, all right? So let's... <laughs> Yang tercipta dia Let's bring this down Runtuhkan buku Bila ku memandangmu Whoa, whoa. And this is not doing more than a dB of gain reduction It's just to catch the very, very, very loudest peaks, okay? So once again, this is to ensure that when it gets to the later stages of additional processing, it's not going to force the other processors to work 
that hard, okay? Extra hard, right? All a little bit of processing here, parallel here, just a dB here, right? A little bit of here and here, uh, processing here, there, right? A little goes a long way, lah, basically. So let's move on, right? So these vocals, lead vocals, also go to a lead vocal group, and this is where there's more stuff happening, okay? So let's check it out, right? First thing I'm going to work on is this 1176. Again, another 1176. So this one, it's not really using more of dynamics because the dynamics are already really even, right? The distressor is taking care of it. The ARCOM is taking care of it. This is mainly used for more of a tone. Again, again, we're going to push this. We're going to compress this, right? Really, really hard. But it's not controlling the dynamics per se. I'm actually trying to squeeze out, again, we're trying to squeeze out energy out of it. We're going to squeeze all the harmonics out of it, right, to make this vocal really, really uh, upfront, okay? Chorus. Chorus. Lovely, okay? I love that, okay? So, let's drop in, right? So, there is another de here because okay, sometimes, right, when you do a little bit of aggressive processing here and that, you're going to need a second de So... <laughs> Okay, just to catch all of those transients, lah, okay, and uh, ex the sibilance, right? Okay, so now I am going to engage this Pultec EQ here, and you're like, hey, w wondering, this EQ is before the 1176. So, exactly, okay? So what this is going to do is, um, it's, it's a very interesting thing. Because obviously when I push or do any sort of boost or cut or attenuation, right? Typically, I will boost. You are, I'm boosting into the 1176 here. And isn't this going to drive the compression even harder? Yes, exactly. That's exactly what we want. But, right, this is going to... Uh, this is pushing those frequencies into the compressor to make those, right, let that, that range of frequencies, right, um, be be really solid so that it really comes out even and it does not poke out lah, right so this is n this is a way of doing it so it's very counterintuitive right because you hear that the compression starts working extra that's where sometimes you need to go back you might need to tweak a little bit of the input output but uh, typically this is i know i love the results of, of hearing of hearing this lah. so let's bring the bandwidth all max to the broad broadest right right and then we're going to push Right, the these frequencies into the compressor. So you can see that instantly it kind of pops out a little bit, right, whilst the dynamics are still being controlled, but that three 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 kilohertz here. Right, um, really helps. Let's experiment with others. I like how 3K sounds, and sometimes with 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 male vocals, this is this is where the magic is. Right, that 3K is is there. But let's check. Okay, it's good too. Okay, right. I actually like 4K too, right? 3K or 4K, right? Between the, between these two. 8K starts getting into the airy band kind of a territory. And with pop vocals, sometimes I will do that because, you know, you want that little airy airiness that, that's, that happens there. But with rock, that's not necessarily what we want. We want like to really where the meat of everything is, right? It's around the 3-4K region. Let me decide, okay? 3K. Okay, set. 3K. 3K it is, okay? Okay, gonna dr push a little bit of 100 hertz in, a little bit of. Just to add a little bit more weight into back in, okay? 
And there we go. Lovely. Awesome. Love how it's sounding, man. So, next thing I'm going to do is Vocal Rider. So, once again, um, this is going to be... All of these things are going to be a little bit subtle. Like obviously, 1176 is not, not something subtle. But Vocal Rider is, again, going to be subtle, right? So, I'm going to set the range to about... Right, 6 dB, so that it's not going to dance around like crazy. And let's find the right little level. Very nice. Okay, let's go back to the verse. Very nice. Very nice, okay? So, right, vo it's really bringing out some of the low, the uh, the lower level parts and making it sound really, really even, okay? Again, it's like cheating, man. <laughs> Vocal rider. So, let's drop, okay, so some of this, I'll probably want to drop this down about a dB. Let's, let me just do a little bit of rough, right, overall automation as well. So, again, dynamics, okay? So, when you get to the verse, probably about 2 dB. <laughs> Very good. Then we get to the... So when it kicks into the pre-chorus, we'll probably bump it up by, let's say, about a dB, I think. So let's bring it up to about minus one. Right? Because again, dynamics. In fact, probably up to. In fact, up to back to Unity, right? Which is where the chorus is. Lovely, okay. So let's go to second core, uh, second verse. Okay, in terms of the dynamics and intensity here, so this doesn't doesn't I don't need to drop it down, which is which is cool. So let's just leave it there for now. Okay, let's go back to Okay, uh, let's go back to the verse again. Okay, so time to put in a little bit of effects. So let's check it out. Let's solo it. First thing I would always love to do is I would use super tap. I want to make the vocal sound a little bit more three dimensional. It sounds great. It's it's really cool. It's really up in your face. But sometimes you want to get a little bit of that front back depth. You want to get a bit of that three Dness sense to it. Okay, that makes it sound, you know, a little bit more, how to say, like it belongs in a space. So here's what I would do. I would use super tap. So super tap here is actually a delay, but what I've set it to is I've set it to a very, very, very short delay with no feedback. You don't want this delay to bounce, bounce, bounce. It's just a single reflection, pop, pop, and comes back to you. But the important thing is that this delay here has an EQ section Right, and what the important thing is that there's a low pass filter at 1.5k, so that means everything above 1.5k, right, gets right filtered out, lah. Right, so you're gonna get this sound. I'm gonna exaggerate it first. 
kau begitu sempurna. So you get that one bounce, so it sounds like you're inside some kind of a nice, right, a nice expensive sounding a room. So I'm just gonna back it off. You just want to hear a little bit of it. Di mataku, kau tiada celanya. Okay, right. Listen in context, of course. Yeah, so about right, okay? About right. So you don't want it to be obvious, but you just want to have the sensation of like the vocal being inside a sp inside a, inside a space. Next thing. Now, let's drop in Waves Doubler. Now, okay. Many of you would know that I use doubler when I'm, uh, you know, pulling up the uh, the vocal thickening trick. And again, depending on style, right? If it's pop, if it's a pop rock uh, production, maybe I would do it. But with rock vocals like this, we want to be a little bit more raw. So I don't do that. Like, I'm not going to do that. Again, videos are on the channel. You just do a search for vocal thickening trick, right? The whole tutorial is there as well. Let's put in the doubler. So doubler here is basically adding a little bit of chorusing just to give it. Again, it's meant to be very subtle. You just want to hear the tiny. You don't really want to hear it. You kind of more just want to feel it. It just sounds like the vocal has a little bit more air, a little bit more dimension around it, right? You don't want this effect to distract you, right? You don't, you do, you don't want the listener to be distracted by the effect to to take notice and say, hey, wow, sounds like there's some effect on the vocal, right? That kind of defeats. Sometimes maybe that's the goal, right? Sometimes maybe if the production is meant to do that to have an affected effect. Uh, an affected vocal, then by all means do that. Okay, but if it's not meant to be to be there, these tools are just there to enhance things and not to distract from the the overall production, lah, the overall song. So what I would like to do now is now to give it a bit more of front to back kind of a space. And to do that is we use a mono delay. Very typical mono delay set to the tempo of the song. We'll break it down to about eighth notes first. So as you can hear it. Right, right. Whenever I stop, you'll hear. You'll hear it. Okay. So delays are very good, right? And they have been a tool that's been used to add space without pushing the vocal or pushing the part back in the mix. Okay. Because if you add reverb, reverb will always tend to soften things, will always tend to push things further back in the mix. You don't want that with kind of with modern sound with modern vocals and with modern uh, productions. That's why, right, with the distortion guitars, you don't add reverb to it. So we use a mono delay to give it that space, but without pushing the vocal to the back. So again, very subtle. You just want to hear a little bit of it. Very cool, okay? So, this takes us to the next thing, okay? We talk about building dynamics, right? Dynamics in the mix this is what helps to maintain the attention of the listener. It helps to pull their focus. It helps, it's what causes the listener to keep on wanting to listen to, hey, what's coming next? What's coming next? A lot of it has to do with the arrangement, but, you know, as mixing engineers, you also wield, right, quite the amount of power in helping to pull the listener's attention forward and bring them throughout the journey. So one of the things of doing it is to, by adding, um, is, of course, you achieve that by dynamics, okay? And one of the great tools here, I'm going to talk about two things. So firstly, is more of arrangement and production. This is nothing to do with, right, um, <clears throat> um, my skills or my knowledge as, as a as a mixing engineer. This is there down to a production thing, and this is where right they have um, um the band has recorded these doubled vocals. So these come in at the chorus. And instantly, this lifts the chorus, right? This lifts the chorus instantly because now you have these double vocals. It makes the chorus a little bigger, right? I can pan those two doubles um, to the left and the right, making it sound, you know, bigger than, than what it is. Lah. So it makes the chorus larger than life, all right? So let's solo one of these first. 
Kau begitu sempurna di mataku. Berikan ku sedikit waktu. Right, a little bit of honkiness at about 2K. Waktu untuk bersamamu. Okay, right, let's take out. There's a little bit of. Kau begitu indah yang tercipta dia. Okay, I suspect this is kind of the same. This is the kind of the same frequency, right? That we dealt with the TDR Nova earlier on just now. Yeah, at about 800, so around that region, that 800, 800 plus there. Okay, so this is helps to. Yeah, so right, right, because again, same vocal, same singer, you can expect it to have the same characteristics there. Okay, we also want to take out a bit of the top end. Again, you don't need too much of the high end from all these uh, um, double tracks, right? So let's copy the settings over to this left and right. Again, so important to have a left and right, okay? Um, again, it's not a must, but if you really want your vocals to, to, have, to have that maximum width, then yeah, you need not only your main, you need a double, but you also need technically a triple. Uh, so you need three. One, main vocal down the center, and your doubles left and right. Whether you want to pan it hard left, hard right, that's entirely up to you. But let's start about 50-50 first, okay? Don't just don't want to don't want to uh, push it too far wide. So let's blend this in and let's see. Okay, so I like this. I like where it is right now. Because you just, well, in this case, right, for a rock band, you don't want it to sound like it's a boy band, okay? You don't want it to sound like it's a vocal group. So if you push these doubles a little bit too loud, too, too, too far in front, then it starts to sound like a group, like, like, a, like a vocal group. That's not what you want. You still, you want the, uh, you want the, uh, um, that lead vocal to just sound a little bit bigger, a little bit more exciting. A little more wider, right? A little bit more dynamic. You're not there to transform and then change this vocal into a boy band, okay? I have some other ideas I might play with. I might, you know, add like a, a little bit of um, um, alter boy just to give it. In fact, actually, why not? Let's do it right now, okay? Because I feel that it needs it, right? Just to add a bit of weight to to it, and this is what we're gonna do, right? It's quite a common uh, trick that that uh, I employ. I think a lot of mix engineers also employ this. So, but what this is going to do is we're going to add, right, just an octave below. And let's see how it goes. Right, formant down. Okay, octave again. 12, 12, 12 uh, semitones down. Okay, right. So, listen in context. All right, let's listen in context. Right, okay. Just to add a little bit. Okay, let's copy it over first. Sometimes it's a bit hard to hear with just one. So let's put it on both and let's see how it sounds. Let's pump it up a little bit. Let's bring it up by about 
another DB and so check it out Right, okay. Just very subtle. It's just meant to give a little bit of that lower octave, right, to to the chorus melody to the chorus melody. All right. And so this is the production and the vocal the arrangement tool to right, to uh add enhanced dynamics right to the song. So what about us, mixing engineer? Okay, so we can also think in the same way as well. So remember that in the verse and the pre-chorus, right, our delays in mono. So very common trick and very common tool. But what I would love to do is once the chorus kicks in, I'm going to kick in a stereo delay. So let's right arm it. There you go, right? You should be able to hear it. Okay, but let's tweak first of all the tempo, right? I'm going to turn off this offset, right? So 0% offset. I'm going to change, uh, hang on a second. Uh, I'm going to change this one to dotted notes, okay? Right, and oops, let's take this back down to 25%. Let's bring the feedback of the left to two. About forty percent. To me, this gives a little bit more interesting bounce. First of all, different um, uh, different uh, um, delay tempos here. Quarter quarter notes on the left, dotted quarters on the right. But when you do that, you also got to check your feedback um, settings as well. I have to tweak it. So the left one being the shorter and the faster tempo, I will dial and increase the feedback a little bit more because you already keep the feedback level at the same settings. What's going to happen is that the delay is going to tail off to the right side, to one side, right? So that's going to sound a little bit weird. I want this delay to sound like it's ping ponging a little bit back and forth, like, and they so, so they will all die down at about the same time. So we've got to bring this up by a little bit, okay? Not much, usually about 40% here. So let's check. Okay, so this delay would kick in right on the downbeat. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, down here actually, Sampur Na, right, which is the title of the song. So let's check how much of the stereo delay we want to apply. There you go, right? So not only have we, ha not only are there now doubles, right, on the chorus, but even the delays have gone from a mono delay to a stereo delay. You know, it makes everything a little bit, everything's wider, everything's a little bit more exciting. You know, you have those delays bouncing back and forth. It did just seem to be a lot more going on, just a little bit more excitement to it, lah. So again, that's what we're doing. Okay, we're adding excitement to the to the mix. So let's uh, automate this. This is going to again kick in. Okay, there you go. It's going to kick in there. Okay, then... Yeah, so it should happen. Let's have this in the pre chorus uh, in the sec in the bridge as well. Let's keep it all the way going all the way, shall we? Right? It feels like like it could go all the way. So let's keep this uh go um um stereo did all the way to the end. Lah. 
Okay, so going into this, um, uh, the second chorus, there is a little bit of this overlap here. So, right, very easy. So because I've split the because I've split the uh, uh, vocal track, so why don't we just bring this down here, and it's just a matter of just copying the settings over. Okay, so there we go. Okay, right, sweet, lovely. Okay, again, I love the production choices on this song. So on the quiet chorus, right, there is a low octave, right, that's been added. So let's just bring that. Okay, let's EQ it. So yeah, at about that 800, 830, okay? So and about 3.4, just a little bit of that, right? We, we don't really want this to, we just want it to support, right, the uh, main vocal. So just, just tuck it in a little bit. This goes into the lead vocal group as well. So here we go. Okay, I'm going to do, a, again, a little bit of cleaning up here is going to be needed, right? So I'm going to take out some of these breaths because it's not needed. Yeah, let's take out, take this out. Right, because we don't need both the lead vocal and the vocal layer down below to be breathing, okay? It's like, <laughs> everybody's like... Breathing, it becomes like sound of an ASMR Ooh, thing. But can yeah, okay, so this is not necessary. Okay, let's chop this out. Because on the main on the main vocal, there's already that breathing happening. <laughs> nice little pop there. <laughs> the little, it's, it's come from the, it comes from the P sound. So you get a little bit of pop there. Right, so... All this cleaning up, I'll do it later on off off uh, off stream because otherwise, right, it's going to take a long time. Okay. There you go. There you go. Yeah, so that's a lot cleaner. Okay, so it's cleaned it up a little bit. So let's move on. Okay, we've got all the uh, automation done for that. Okay, very cool. Doubles. Let's move on to BB's backing vocals. Okay, actually, I should probably just check up what's happening in in the chat as well. Okay, da -da -da -da. let's see. Right, Rudy's got some good tips tips as well in the chat. He says, right, for program drums, right, you would want to always change your velocity a bit more at random. That's a very very good point. Very, very good point, right? Uh, I find it very useful, uh, especially on hi hats, cause hi hats, right, are the ones that you know that that's where the that's where the that's where most of the time program drums kind of fall flat is when um whoever is when the programming does not right, pay attention to the hi hat, cause that's really where right the I find that if you you know. Add a little bit of that um, randomness and, and adjustments, tweak the velocities on the hi-hat especially, then that's useful, right? And then other things to pay attention to, so like for example, like kick drums, right? A little bit off. You know, obviously on the downbeats, you will you will have, uh, you know, that, but but those that are on the upbeats, maybe you want the velocity to be a little bit um, softer. Very common, especially if you have, let's say, for example, the 16th note, the e one, two, three, four, 
four E, four E and E, right? Right, just before the next one, three, four, duk duk, right? That kick drum, that init- that that kick drum that comes before the downbeat, usually is right. You want to adjust the velocity because real life, a real drummer is not b- going to hit every single hit evenly. You see, so you want to inject a little bit of that liveliness there. Very very good, right? Okay, so busy says, ha, I really totally get what you mean. You're right. So funny. Kudos for the great job on the recording. All right, all right, all right. Thanks, Wani, for the encouragement. All right, shout out to Busy. Okay, awesome work. Okay, let's go on to the BBs. Let's check out and investigate what we have. So there are four backing vocals here. So this is like a high backing vocal. All right, so you got a high and you got a low BV, right? Let's take a look at the high BV first. Let's solo this, okay? Okay, let's take out. We don't need all that. Okay, a little bit of honkiness at about 870. So let's try this at about 3.5. So again, don't need to, don't need all that top end. So I'll take everything um, 12K and above out. Right, so let's copy the settings over. Let's pan these guys hard left, hard right, okay? Then let's blend it in. Okay, actually, before we do that, let's go over to the BV group. So all these BVs are all going to be bus and routed to the BV group, okay? Because you want to assemble them into groups, right? Again, for work, for easier workflow, right? Um, things like drums all go into groups, right? Everything's organized into groups. And uh, again, I've got a video on that, right? On on the channel, right? Uh, about my mixing template. But this is in order to make things easier to manage. So instead of having to manage four different tracks, you bust them all into one single group and then you go from there, okay? So let me just load in the typical plugins which I usually will have, okay? Right, so it helps to mix into those plugins, lah, right? Very cool. Let's go with the low BV. Okay. Okay, so typical bit of honkiness. So, it's exhibiting that same, you know, honkiness at that region. So, uh, without without being actually there at the recording, I can't tell. Sometimes it's the voice, so you're using the same, same, same vocals. Sometimes it's the microphone. Sometimes it can be the characteristic of the room or a combination of all the above. Lah. Let's check it again. So same thing, right? Also same, same, exactly the same frequencies that it's exib- uh, exhibiting this. Right, so let's group the low BVs together. Now, for how do I pan these, these uh, harmony parts? So, uh, this this strategy not only applies to um, BVs, but it also applies also to other instrumental parts as well. Now, typically, right, let, let, let's start with the understanding of, of uh, frequencies, okay? So, high frequencies, okay, I got a phone call coming in right there, right now. Let me just check, is it important? Let's ignore that for a second. Oh, it is, it is someone, it is someone, okay? Let's ig- ignore that. Another drummer, another musician is calling me, right? I should remember to silent my phone next time. Okay. Hey, and uh, what are we? Well, where where was I? Okay. So this applies as well to. Okay, let's talk about frequencies. So right? it doesn't only apply to to backing vocals; it can apply to instruments. So, generally, 
low frequencies, right, uh, tend to be omnidirectional, meaning that they tend to spread in uh, all directions. High frequencies, however, tend to be directional in nature, in the sense that, right, they, um, they um, very often, you right, point towards, they propagate towards a certain direction from the sound source. Very easy. Every time, anytime you walk to right across right PA speakers or a concert, if you walk backstage, for example, what do you hear? You generally hear all the bottom end. You hear all the low end. You to hear all the top end, right? All the high mids and everything. You need to stand in front of the speakers. Then that's where that's what I mean. So it applies here as well. So, um, in order to sort of get the maximum apparent stereo width. We generally want to keep the high frequency elements further out, right? Because this gives you, right, gives give you the width, okay? Where else you want to keep the lower frequency elements maybe closer towards the middle, right? Center, right, or or you know, halfway whereabouts, lah, right? In this case, I'm having the low mids, the low BV parts 50-50. Well, uh, this helps give you the maximum width. If you, for by any chance, want to flip it the other way around, you want to keep everything sounding a little bit tighter around the center, you can do it the opposite way as well. No right, no wrong. It depends on your personal taste and what you like, okay? So let's blend this in. All right, here we go. Okay, let's keep it that, right? Again, with pop punk, with like punk rock stuff, you don't want the BBs to be too obvious. Again, we're not we're not dealing with you know, uh, boy band here. Okay, so just there to add a little bit of color. So let's check it in solo. Let's bring in TDR Nova again. So sometimes when you have all these stacks of uh, um, um, vocals, sometimes some peaks will start to poke through. So about 2.6, 2.5k, there was a little bit of a peak. All right. All right, widen the queue a little bit. Okay, right, and we're going to cheat with Vocal Rider. Okay, all right. Let's go set with moderate riding, and that's fine. So this is lovely, man. It really helps to right keep this uh, uh, BV even. Right, so that, so that I make sure that all the harmonies, everything just, just comes out evenly. Right, and then a touch of FG two A. Right. Okay, right. I would dip out a little bit of 3k, right? Just an EQ, right? Typically around here, just one dB, just to just to give it a little bit of uh, push it a little bit back, because we want the BBs not to poke out too much. Tiny bit of stereo delay. I want to take out a little bit more of the top end. Okay. So this one is a little bit slightly, um, a little bit of sibilance there. So let's just drop in a sibilance quickly. Let's drop in a de -esser. Right, wide band, full range. One more time. Okay, 
There you go, all right? Check in. I might drop that high vocal because it's starting to poke out a little bit too much. And bring up the lower harmony actually, just to give it a bit more weight. Okay, now, now I'm going to go back. So remember what I talked about set and don't forget. Now I feel like I need to go back again. Now in context with everything else, with all the bass, all the vocals, everything. Now I feel that this is snare is going to poke out a little bit too much. So I just bring this attack back down. There you go. Yeah, because I felt I was like taking over the vocals. So this helps right, bring the attention back. Small little tweak, right? Just put the attack back to the fastest. So, where are we? Okay, let's go on. Let's add on the uh, let's add on this pluck the guitar parts, All right? So this is the guitar part that comes in the intro. So let's check it out. Right, you don't need all the bottom. Sounds good on its own. Alright, so let's duplicate the setting. Okay, now let's let's try and let's put this in the middle first, okay? Uh like halfway. Let's see. Check it out. Well let's just leave it. Let's just leave it all the way, okay? Let's check it out again. Let's chop it shorter and see. Let's see what happens. Yeah, that sounds actually a little bit tighter, okay? So instead of uh, this there, let's bring it in here so that it ends really tight. Okay, let's go on to the octave, the line guitars. Let's check it out. Okay, and okay, let's engage the group. Okay, it doesn't need all that bottom. Eh? Okay, it's a bit, a bit of this fizz here. Yeah, a little bit of fizz at about 5.6k. That's cool. Again, I like it. This already has got the reverb in it, which is for guitars. I think it's a really good approach, especially for this sort of parts. Because you know it helps to put everything in context, you see, with a, with the appropriate uh, tone. So I think that works, right? With with, and so I don't mind, right? Guitars with effects in them because that is there's no need for me to recreate these kind of sounds, especially you know, uh, especially on some of these sounds. I personally like to record guitars with effects and just bake it into the sound itself. Uh, I find it I find it a lot useful, Okay. Right, okay, here we go. And I've talked about this in another video before, so right, probably not gonna go into that. So here we go. Very cool, okay. So let's put these uh these these plug guitars. I'm going to add a VCA fader. Okay, alright, plug guitars. So VCA fader is another option to right, to control groups of uh tracks instead of putting them into an actual group, 
uh, which takes a lot of CPU, let's do a VCA fader instead. So, because all I want to do is just control the, the level, see? So let me just bring, bring this down by a dB. In fact, a little bit more. In fact, maybe about 2 dBs down. In fact, not only that, let's keep it back at 50-50. And again, the reason for doing this, why I'm going to bring this in at 50-50, right? Because I want to create a little bit of dynamics, okay? So, okay, let's keep this at, let's keep the intro hard left, hard right. That's fine, but going into the verse. I want to narrow this, I want to narrow the guitars down a little bit. Because this is again to create the dynamics, okay? This is going to create the, uh, the, the impression that the guitars are going to be growing. Right, so from a little bit slightly narrower center image to when it kicks in, right, when the other distortion, when the other parts kick in, full heart, left, heart, right, then, you know, as a listener, the impact is a little bit greater that way. Lah. Okay, so here we go. Okay, and what is this? This is the octave part, right? Yeah, kind of a little funky uh, octave guitar part. So let's automate this down. Maybe about 3 dB. Okay, so coming back to like, so when these plug guitars come back in, we'll hard left, hard right. Yeah, it's like a little unison line, huh? Let's bring this back up. So now the line guitars go back up. In fact, might even might even uh, be worth bumping this up to about a dB, right? Okay, let me check this out. All right, so it's two different guitar tones there actually, all right? So let's check out this second high line. Solo it first. Yeah, okay, take out a little bit of the, all the extreme bottom end, take out all the extreme top end. Lah. All right, again, it's not necessary to have all of that. All right, make space for the other elements. So let's check this out. This one is just slightly lower, maybe the half dB lower. Very 
very, very cool. All right, so let's move on very quickly. Now, one thing I want to sort of uh, um, point out here is that what a lot of what I'm going to be demonstrating here, these are all mainly going to be the broad strokes. There's going to be definitely a lot more fine-tuning that needs to be done later, and usually that's going to be done afterwards. Uh, we're going to pull everything to what I would call maybe the first draft of the mix, right? Where all the overall balances are there. But all the fine tuning, such as all the detail automation work, that's all going to take place later. Usually, after a couple of hours, we'll take a break, right? I'll take a little bit of an ear break, and then you right, move on to doing all those uh, automation parts and automation uh, bits. But that's not something that I will show on the live stream because if I do that, that's going to take us all the way to like 3, 4 a.m. in the morning, right? I mean, <laughs> and the people's attention spans are not that long nowadays, okay? So let's move on. Synth, right? So this little synth part comes in here. And hello, synths. Okay, let's turn on the group. Very nice. So is this like a little, little arpeggiator part, okay, which is very cool. And arpeggiator parts are a great candidate for MV2 again, right? So just to make every note sort of come out, right? Not the loud one, not necessarily just the louder notes. All right, it also brings out the transient, the, the little attack portion of that note as well. In fact, if you talk about transient, right? Okay, let's listen in context first. Let's listen in context first. Come here, see in the hey, synth group. Okay, right. Because everything is uh, everything is inside this group. That's why. Very cool. It works already. It works already. But what if... What if we... Just make it a little pokier, and we're gonna do that by da da da. Where are you, transient designer? Okay, actually, don't need transient. Okay, yeah, transient designer probably good. Uh, especially this is transient designer plus because I can dial in the side chain to the particular note. So let's turn on the side chain first, and let's listen to. Okay, right, so side chaining to this uh this note and let's bring up the Hello, oh there we go. Just gives a little bit more like you know a percussiveness to that note. Sweet, okay. And this little same thing just happens for like a couple of bars, you know. Very cool. Come here, see in the Ruang can want to cool. Very nice. Okay, let's go. This fake panning scene. What is this? Right? Can't remember. So let's check it out. Ah, all right, cool. <laughs> Almost like a sounds like Transformers. Come here. Very cool. Okay, so this is probably just there to give. Let's drop it in. There you go. There you go. That's all we need. Okay, let's move on to this little Vox FX thing. So this is like a vocal chop sample. I'm not missing. There you go, okay. So this will probably receive the same treatment with vocals as well, right? With the parallel processing. Let's solo it. Very cool. Okay, right. So some of the uh, it's really cool. It's got this reverse uh, effect going on as well. But just to sort of even that out, and we got our good friend MV two again. Let's try. And
Very cool, okay? Very, very cool. I may play around with this, maybe add a little bit of like ping pongy kind of a delay later on. Uh, that, but we'll think about it later, okay? Right, so it gets a little bit more complex here going into the second verse. Okay, so let's do this little fade out so it probably will fade out from here. What if I fade it out here? So let's keep the look. Yeah, it's a little bit more dramatic, I think. A little bit more dramatic. Okay, let's drop this down here. Very, very cool. Okay, let's check out next one. This will seem to be here. Or let's go to the solo first, okay? So low. Okay, let's check out. So low. Solos, right? So sometimes it sounds a little bit counterintuitive, but with solos, sometimes I find it uh, beneficial to just, ch you know, kind of take a little bit of the edge off. And solos are again another great candidate for MV2. Okay, MV2 is like the MVP of uh, this this mix of almost every mix that I do. Actually, MV2, because once again, this helps to bring out all the single notes, all the articulation, the the pick attack, right? The the uh, every single note that that comes out of it, it brings out the sustain as well, and it does it in such a way that. Uh, it's again something that is very unique to MV2. La. There we go. Let's go back to the solo. So I'm hearing, okay, what I'm really trying to hear for and what we're trying to, to get this solo to really cut out, right? To really feel like it's in your face. You want, you know, your articulation of all the pick attacks to, you know, that to be there. Very often, sometimes if that gets lost, then the solo feels a little weak, you know, if, of course, right? So especially every single start of the note, you can hear that that pick attack gets emphasized. To ch 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 that kind of a sound, and that what that's re that really helps the uh, solo to sort of stick out. <laughs> Very nice. Okay, so I like that they um, that they have uh, kept the solo kind of dry. Which does give me a little bit of options to uh, sort of color it a little bit. La. So I love using Acon Multiply, right? So this is kind of like a chorusing, kind of like doubling, right? But I like it and I almost pretty much only use this for, so for solos, okay? Right, just a little bit of chorusing just to give it a bit of extra dimension. And again, not too much, <clears throat> not too much, okay? Because too much, then you get into the uh, the kind of a 80s uh, or you know pro proc rock uh, um, kind of uh, a guitar sound, lah. Okay, so that's not what we want. And a little bit of delay, thanks to Echo Boy. Let's go with Echo Boy, right? Sue your tape. Let's go with Echo Plex, <laughs> right?
So let's take a little bit of a high cut. All right. Bump up a little bit more. Very nice, okay? Okay. Probably a little bit of automation. Some of the notes, again, all the fine detail automation stuff, I will do it usually later, not, not right now on the live stream. Let's check out Synth B. And what is Synth B? Right. So also sort of an arpeggiator kind of a thing. And again, a good candidate to bring all that detail out is again, lah. Okay, we should probably just call this at the episode MV2, okay? So it just brings out all the details of all the notes. Let's check it out. I'm kind of curious actually. Let's go back to right, go back to the elite guitars here. So, back to yeah, this is the funky guitar part, right? So, let's drop this back down to 10 minus 4. Okay, so this little line. So this should bump back up to where we had it originally. Should be about one to be. Maybe not zero first. Then only when the chorus, actual chorus kicks in, then only we pump it up to one dB. And should um, I just saw the chat early on just now, but you know, I didn't get to say sorry, man. Eyes and Ear Productions, hey, Chris, right? Chris says, Hey, all JD, happy new year, and whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> Shut up, man, it's been a while, man. Hope your new year's been good, right? Hopefully, um, Chinese new year plans, right? And any Chinese new year plans, what your Chinese new year plans are, man. I don't know, hopefully, if you're still watching this, right. Uh, let me know, right, in the chat. Or drop me a message. Nice. Okay, so let's go back to the uh, bridge. Right, so, very cool. A little bit of messing around. Maybe the vocals just need to be up about a half a dB. I don't know. Right, we'll, we'll, we'll decide later. But let's, let's move on first, okay? So, going back to the quiet chorus, let's think about these pluck guitars again. So, maybe we can... Maybe I can bring them in once again to maybe about halfway. So let's see what the effect is, okay? How let's see how it feels. Do I keep it hard left, hard and right as originally or let's see what happens if I tuck it. Bring the volume up as well because that's that's not the only thing, right? So bring the volume back up to unity. Let's see, let's see. Let's just 
just keep it back to where it originally was. Let's just go hard left, hard right. Yeah, because it feels like it feels like when I brought it to the center, it made the it made things look congested over there, right? Again, that's in my impression of things. So should this sustain or should this cut out? I've got I've I've got a feeling that I want to chop this short, but let's see. Okay, we'll see what the band thinks, lah. It makes sense to chop it there. Right? I don't know. It makes sense to me to just drop it out there. Right, because everyone's kind of cutting there, so that that one guitar trailing through just didn't make sense. Okay, now, so here the solo, we need to drop it down a little bit lah. Yeah, so maybe about 3 dB overall for the solo, right? And not only that, we'll also kind of swing it over to, let's see which side. Swing it over to the right, just a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit to the right, just to give it space, so that it doesn't like take up right in the middle, right? As also with the with the vocal. Well, maybe let's give fifty percent. See, fifty, fifty. How does it feel? Too far right? Close our eyes. Yeah, that's, that's all right. That's all right. Fifty is still okay. Or does it not does not sound like it's like way too way off to the side. Now it brings us to this last element, the ad libs. <laughs> right, so these ad lib uh, parts, let's check it out. Okay, this would all go to vocal. Very cool. Right, so let's drop in same like vox uh, parallel processing. Okay. So with ad lips, let's check it out, okay? Okay, okay. Let's take out a little bit of the top end. And what I want to do and try is uh actually let's go with Let's go with, uh, I remember. Okay, let me try and look for it. There is one little um, setting somewhere. I can't remember which one it is, man. Is it this guy? Is it the CQ? New telephone? All right, let's check it out. Not, uh, okay, right. This is not... Uh, not as uh, um, not as dash drastic as I want. Let me look for it. Let me look for where it is. Okay. Let's see. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Okay, I'll have to I'll have to look for it because. But basically, what I want to do is I want to give it maybe the you know, the typical mid-range telephone, uh, you know, phone kind of effect. There you go. This is just the default. The default preset just works better, okay, somehow. Okay, and with this, it can also benefit from a little bit of 
um, it will benefit from a little bit of a delay uh, and a little bit of reverb. So let's drop in the little plate. Sound Toys is fantastic, man. I mean, it's like everything you need is in there. So let's drop in. So, right, so these ad libs happen throughout the choruses, so let's check it out first. Should I just keep it in the middle? Alright, okay, so see over here it's it's a little bit of uh, like a uh, falsetto kind of an echo. So. I think, okay, so this is going to need a little bit more processing, and, okay, uh, let's see, okay, one of the favorite tools that I use to try and really squeeze vocals out, and it's a very popular tool that's, you know, I think this trick is like, what, 20 years old, you know, been doing this since like the 2000s already, is to use L1, right, as a vocal limiter. So let's try vocal broadcast. Let's bring it back down to 12. Right, let's check. Nice, that's pretty good. Let's go back again. Can be a little bit more extreme, I think. Yeah. That's more like it. And guess what, okay? Guess what? We can enhance that a little bit more with <laughs> the cheating vocal rider, okay? So this one, let's go with moderate riding, okay? Cheating, man, but... Right, okay, so it really evens out all those parts. To be honest, though, I think the most if more effective thing to do is probably to just clip gain this up, and that's what exactly what I'm going to do here. Let's bring this. The cool is just a little buried. Just up a little bit, 40 dB maybe. Yeah, I like that. That's a little bit better, okay? So, so this is the same thing, right? Okay, I'm assuming that this is the same thing, so I'm going to take a shortcut and just copy and paste it. Okay. But obviously the one here is a little different. Right. Yeah, so this one is definitely a little softer. Okay, and then... Almost there, guys. Almost there. Okay, so when you get to this last three ad libs, I feel that maybe let's bring them off to the side. Same thing, give space, right, for the. You're 
right. Okay, so that works. But just drop the volume down to maybe minus five. Right, very, very cool. So, right, we're kind of about two hours plus into the thing, and uh, that's really good, man. Right, you know, because sometimes I think the average length of the, the streams go on to about three hours plus usually, but two hours plus is good. And right, not only, the, first of all, the track count is not insanely, you know, you don't have too many track counts, but again, with the source, which is good, which is great, it really helps cut down the time, right? So I don't spend so much time like trying to figure out problems, trying to fix issues, trying to fix things. It's really just about mixing. So I just mix, 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 right? And that really helps, right? One of the key things of, of effective mixing is to mix fast, right? Um, this, is, this is something that uh, Mixer Man refers to as be aggressive in the mix. That you have to make your decisions fast. Make everything fast. You will trust your feelings, trust your gut instincts. Because very often, right, those will turn out to be true, true, turn out to be correct. So instead of being an analytical but trying to analyze how to make everything fit together, trying to make every part audible, try to focus on and, and make mixed decisions on how things feel, okay? So, typically at this stage, right, I'll just show you a couple of more things, right, and then I, for my own purposes, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to be switching over to a different pair of monitor speakers, right. So, what I use, I use, um, I usually start in the mix, and typically most of the time, I'm always working on the big speakers, which are Kali, right, Kali Audio LP8s, these are big 8-inch eight uh, eight speakers. But during the mix, and usually at this stage where I'm going to go to all the fine fine tune balances and all that, I will typically switch over to a second pair of monitors. And in this case, I'm using Yamaha NS Tenza. So just give me a second. Let me switch over. Right. And being passive monitors, I have to turn on the power amp. Right. Using the, uh, not only your hand condition, your feet. Feet and toe uh, technique also needs to be a good. Right. So I'm sure drummers will be good at this because you need to be uh, flexible with all your <laughs> with all your fig all your uh, limbs. Okay, so I'm gonna go over a couple of things. First thing would be I want to sort of tweak a little bit of my stereo bus processing. Okay, so typically at this stage, this is where I will you know do play around with my uh, um, stereo stereo bus processing. So let's dial it in at the loudest part of the song. So I'll go to maybe this chorus. Okay, let's start first of all, okay? So let's start first of all. This wave C4 here is just gonna... The, the purpose of this is just to make sure that there's no particular frequency band that pokes out too much. So I'm just gonna dial this down and all I just wanna see is just to see this dancing bare minimum, right? There you go. Very, very subtle. It's meant to be subtle. Okay, next one. Let's go with the bus compressors, okay? So, um, I've... Uh, um, what I'd like to do is uh, have these three in series. FG Grey, FG Red, FG Mu. Each just doing... Just one dB. Very cool. So, a couple of other secret sauce, uh, um, a little bit of seasoning that I love to do and I've been uh, using for quite some time now is just to add a little bit of SPL iron to it. Iron is amazing, man. Uh, it's an amazing mastering compressor. But what I would do here is actually engage it into an MS mode. So what I found and I really, really like, right, 
uh, is that we're going into MS mode and just right, um, pretty much again because of how I really set up my gain structure, my calibration, my levels, it really fits and just pushes into it just nicely. And this is very subtle. Again, it's fractions of a dB, right? right? Not more than not more than one dB. But because of how it is treating the mid and the side separately, I find that with this, it's the the iron helps me to suddenly kind of clears everything. It separates everything a little bit wider, gives a little bit of better separation amongst all things. But it's also got a couple of good things as well. It also has this little tone control here, which either air base, right, bypass, or tape roll off. I like to go inside tape roll off, lah, right? So again, just to smooth smoothens out the um the the top end just a tiny bit. Okay, drop in. Right. This is something I've learned from uh, another mastering engineer, right? He just uses the API 560. I just drop it in. No boost, no cuts, no nothing. It's just running through the circuitry and the sound of the API itself, right? This helps to solidify that center, okay? Whatever stuff that is in the center. And, okay, let's do a few more things, okay? We talk about, right, building dynamics. We talk about, you know, um, uh, things that are achieved inside the arrangement. So there are a few other tips and tricks which you can do as well. So one of the things I like to do with bass, right, is I would like to automate, right, some of the bass levels as well. So here we go. Typically what I do is when we kick into the chorus, all right, I will just bump in this little 1 dB shelf at 100 Hz. So let's take a look, okay? Okay, let's arm it. There you go, right? So just a dB boost when you kick it into the chorus. So very often, sometimes, all right, of course, right, we add all the parts, we add all these parts, all the guitar parts helps to bring everything, you know, to a bigger level you know, in terms of the mid-range, in terms of the higher parts, right? You add a lot of energy. But sometimes you must not neglect the bottom end as well. Yeah, you are piling in all these parts, you're making things a little bit brighter, a little bit broader. But sometimes you need to sort of even things out, you want to also have your bottom end grow a little bit bigger as well. So this little tiny subtle trick uh, really, really helps, okay? Just by boosting the bass 1 dB, a shelf at 100 hertz, uh, whenever the chorus kicks in. Okay, then when the verse kicks in, we'll drop that out. So, let's repeat the same process. Chorus! Okay, right, so let's check out here. Then final chorus. Same thing, all right. Same thing. So see, so every time we kick in the chorus, just a subtle one dB boost, right, to the bottom end, right, just to sort of help it grow in weight as well. So last thing, right, before we wrap it up, okay, and call it, call it a night for this live stream is one last little trick. It's a very, very simple thing that we can do to sort of, um, uh, again, induce and create the sense of growing dynamics to, to pull the listener. It's just to automate the stereo bus, the master bus, okay? So what I'm going to do is I will just ramp it up every time we kick into the chorus by just 1 dB. So here it goes. Now let's roll from a little bit earlier, okay? Okay, arm the master. We're ready. Right, so very simple thing. <clears throat> so it just ramps up across these two bars. Da -da 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 -da. Right, busy says there cheating versus being efficient is not the same. <laughs> right, wise words. Right, so coming out of this 
Okay, so for coming out from this little interlude, I think we'll just have a gentle, gentle ramp out, right? And this is. Okay, so let's just copy over the same thing. Let's have the same treatment over the next chorus. Okay, right, starting from bar 70. Yeah, so just bump up the stereo bass by 1 dB. Okay, right, so at this solo, we'll keep it there. Then drop it out do the, do the, the quiet chorus. Alright, so this one will be a little bit short, okay? Just a short little drop out. And finally. Okay, and then another two bar ramp up and all the way to the end, okay? So obviously, right, when you get to the last chorus. So there you have it, alright? Every time we hit the chorus, bumps up 1 dB throughout the bridge, the solo and the bridge up 1 dB, drop down again. So this little subtle increase up and down, right, helps to give you, the listener, it feels like, wow, suddenly the chorus does become more exciting, right? It becomes a little bit bigger, it feels a little bit bigger, it feels a little bit louder because it is, but it's done in such a subtle way that it's not obvious that someone has turned up the volume. Lah. It's been one of the oldest tricks in the in the book, right? We're talking about psycho psychoacoustics phenomenon here. Louder always seems to sound better to the listener, okay? So there you go. So that is uh, that brings us to the end of this live stream, which is a, a fairly short one. We made to end before 12, which is really, really cool. So this is what I would call maybe the first draft, okay? So typically, I would, you know, take a near, take a near break, right? Come back again and do all the fine-tuning stuff. Like I said, you're right, a lot of fine-tuned stuff is going to be done um, uh, later on. So typically, either I'll take a break and then continue on, or sometimes I'll start fresh the following morning and come and work on it. Lah. All right, so, so we're going to call it a night. And thank you so much again for everyone for watching and for tuning into this, right? This is the uh, first thing that I've done so far. I've, you know, I took over a month break um, over, you know, over Christmas and the New Year. And now, obviously, Chinese New Year is around the corner. So, um, uh I have a lot of things that I'll probably share in another video later on down on what the future and what the progress is for for the channel. You know, stuff, mm, the, 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 the content might not come out as often and as frequent, but, you know, I definitely still want to do like, any, um, as many of these live streams as possible. We started out, this whole channel started out like, doing uh, doing all these live streams, right, um, throughout lockdown in, in COVID. And it's definitely one of the things which I really, really enjoy most doing, la, right? Uh, that and also the podcast as well. But, you know, enough jibber-jabber. You're not here and don't want to do the same days. Again, big shout-out again to every one of you who have watched this and every one of you who may be watching this on the uh, the, the recording. A big shout-out to Escape Plan. Thanks to the band for um, letting me feature this song on uh, Mixstream. Right? Big shout-out as well to uh, Busy for right, uh, doing a great job. Awesome, awesome work, uh, uh, on this on this production, everyone who tuned in the live stream, uh, all the patrons, right? Thank you again for your support. Some of you have been, you know, helping to contribute to the channel for like two over years already, and you know, I really appreciate it. Right, all the, all the small amounts really helps me to keep going. So, the usual things: like, share, subscribe. Okay, see you again. Let's take a quick listen over to the uh the the overall mix of of the song, and then right, we'll we'll call in the night. Okay. And here we go. Happy New Year, Happy Chinese New Year. Thank you, Busy. All right.
definitely I will you know some thoughts as well closing thoughts I will definitely need to sort of rebalance a little bit of the drums because listening on the NS10s they sound they sound really loud <laughs> you know to, 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 sort of, to, uh, to say the least maybe the guitars also need to be a little bit in front the bass right I may do that instead right I will bring right a little bit of the low end a little bit of the bass up I may have been a little bit conservative with the bass uh, uh, earlier on. Mixing too many pop songs, uh, I think, the, the past couple of months. Right? The past month. It's super, super busy. Game the chorus. Nice. Yeah, I think generally overall, I think the bass and the distortion guitars need to come back up a little bit. Like the rhythm distortion that just bring down some of the octave lines. Right? Busy says, haha, I have to agree with you after the drums a bit too loud. We love our drums and we love our drummers, you see? <laughs> and it's weird, I've got two of my favorite drummers right in the live chat tonight's live. It's a kick in the snare, I think that's a little too that's a little too loud. Yeah. It's just that. Minute, yeah, you did right. <laughs> Last chorus. I love it, man. This, this is a really great song. Awesome, All right? I think that's good plan. You right? Should go on a should uh, go on a tour in 2023, man. Yeah, the app maybe to drop down a little bit. I'm gonna mess around with some of the balances there, okay? There we go. Good night, everyone. Thank you so much. Take care. Peace, love, and music. See you again real soon.